Hello. Hello. Welcome. Can every Hi. Welcome, Stuart. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another day of the free JavaScript bootcamp. I'm so excited to be joining you today, and I'm so excited to introduce Stuart, who's going to be joining us for the lesson today. Stuart, please say hi to everyone and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. Um, my name is Stuart Langridge. Um, I'm a uh, IT person. <laughs> my, I, I do a bunch of JavaScript development. I do a lot of consultancy with companies who want to build new software. Um, stuff like that. And um, if people have done one of these boot camps before, I've done a couple of talks there. And it's, I'm honestly quite honored to be invited back. So thank you very much. How could we not? You're <laughs> such a joy and, and, and such a good teacher. I appreciate you so much. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, um, if you're joining for the first time, um, we are doing these all uh, live streaming, but they're also recorded on YouTube. So if you're catching up, please don't worry. Uh, everything is recorded. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash at bad website club, you should have everything in there you need in terms of recordings. If you want to get a schedule as long uh, along with a Discord invite link, uh, let me link you all to that. You'll go to, let me just highlight that here, badwebsite.club, and then you'll click on the JavaScript Bootcamp for 2024. Um, the Discord link you should also find in there in there is bit.ly forward slash bwc dash discord dash invite. And lastly, and that's the last of me going on and on and on about links. Um, if you uh, are joining this bootcamp, you are agreeing to abide by our code of conduct. That's bit.ly forward slash bwc dash coc. Um, if you see anything out of sorts, please get in touch with us. Uh, and of course, we'll sort you all out. Um, again, Stuart, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, <laughs> folks in the chat, if you could, please, while we're getting set up for today, catch us up a little bit on what we did yesterday, and let's get started with what we'll be doing today. So, uh, Stuart, you're already familiar with the, this curriculum, I uh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I um, I spent a little bit of time studying it. And it's um, You get a cool game at the end of it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. And so what we're doing is taking our first steps into learning JavaScript, and we've done a bunch of stuff. Um, could you scroll us down just a touch, please, Stuart? I am. Thank you. So the homework that we did yesterday, I think we stopped at around um, step 65 or 66, was to do everything and so that we could start today with step 70. Now, just to give us some context, we were working with our locations array where we were adding these locations for the game. So as you all know, we do a lot of pair programming on this bootcamp. So today I will be navigating and Stuart will be very kindly driving. And this is, of course, something where it's not going to mean that Stuart's going to be just silently typing. Stuart's going to be lending us his wisdom as well. So please ask lots of questions, call us out on decisions like this is meant to be interactive. So let's get right to it. Um, what we're going to be doing in this step is adding a third object to our locations array. So we already know what to do with that. Um, so Stuart, if you could uh, put your cursor in there, we can start typing. Yeah. Fantastic. So we'll be starting with an, with the curly brackets to denote, uh, denote an object. And inside there, we're going to have a couple of properties with a key and a value. So the first one's going to be name, whose value with the semicolon will set to be a a string with the word cave. Perfect. Uh, colon, not a semicolon. Uh, that is a comma to separate. Oh, that's a, that's a full colon. Yes, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Co um, colon in between um, the uh, name of the property and the value of the property, comma in between. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Perfect. The next one is going to be button text, which is a two-worded uh, key. So Stuart here is putting a string, putting it in a string to, to denote that. And then we're going to have that be the yeah, before, value. Before you go, before you go on, um, there's Please. nothing wrong with also doing that here if you want to. You that can is correct. quite happily make this be a string. You just If there's only one word, you don't have to. Um, so that it's, is exactly it, correct. It, it looks kind of tidier to do this. But if you've got a space in there, you couldn't do this because it doesn't exactly. understand the idea. It thinks button and text are separate words. So Exactly. We put it in quotes. Correct. Thank you. Um, then uh, we're going to make the value of this property be an array. So we're going to use the square brackets for that. 
and we're going to have them be separated in lines. And it doesn't matter if you put in this enter or not, but it just looks cleaner to read for us as developers to keep, keep up with the code we're writing. Then we're going to set three values in this array, and they're all strings. So the first one's going to be fight slime. And we do do watch out. Yeah, exactly, to make that capital. <laughs> and we they separate each of these. <laughs> You're totally fine. So the next one is going to be uh, fight fanged beast. Perfect. And the last one is going to be go to town square. And this is also a string. You could totally I'm copy paste What it. I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it. That's perfect. Um, yes, there we go. Um, and actually Great. that these three all do fit on one line, which is nice, but you can format Absolutely. them like that if you like. Um, the 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 space in between one thing in an array and the next thing in an array can be any amount of white space you like. You can put any number of spaces in, any number of enters in, doesn't matter. It just treats it all as being one space. Correct. Exactly. So now we're going to put in our next property. Thank you so much. And we're going to have that be button functions. And that one is going to be another array, which is made up of three function references. So we're not going to use strings for these, but just the names of the functions themselves. So that's going to be fight slime, fight beast, and go town. Perfect. And I think that our last property here is going to be text. And again, because this is a single word, we don't need to worry about it being in a string. And we can copy and paste that value there. Perfect. There I use Control C and Control V on the keyboard, but you can do Perfect. it by selecting and right clicking and saying copy uh, if you prefer. Um, on a Mac, it's Propeller C, I think, or Options. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> But yes, there are keyboard shortcuts for copying and pasting if you'd like to use them, but you don't have to. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, we got a question here from Stephen that I am going to highlight here. Does there need to be one space and only one space between the colon and the first square bracket? I feel like I've run into some finicky format formatting in CSS about where a square bracket is. I don't think there needs to be. No. So the reason for that is in, um, in JavaScript, all white space counts as the same. So you can have one space. You can even have no spaces. We could have an enter here if we wanted. That will all work fine. Um, in CSS, things are a bit different because square brackets in CSS are used with attributes. And there it can make a difference. People tend to put one space after a colon. Um, and quite often, if you're doing this work in an editor, then the editor will put in effort to tidy up your code for you and it will sort out yeah. this kind of formatting but it's not required you could do that you could do that i've seen some people for example line things up so they look yeah. like that. um and that can be useful i well, i personally don't like it but um but you you can do that if it's convenient for you so yeah the amount of space you have does not matter it, um, if it's outside a string. So this string here, go to town square. If we put loads of spaces in the middle of that. Right. That affects the string. That because this string is defining what will happen. So up here, that would actually end up saying go to town square with loads of spaces in it. But outside strings and outside variable names and things, you can have as much space as you want. And that's not a problem. Perfect. Yeah. So it's more of a it's it's more of a stylistic thing, but I find it good to be consistent. Yeah. Um, I also want to answer this question for Kai for Q, who's saying, would fight slime brackets, fight beast brackets, and go to brackets work? Do you wanna do you wanna take that one? Okay. And the answer is 
No. And the yeah. reason for that is because if you were to put fight slime brackets in here, what that would do is call the fight slime function and then put the result of calling that function in this bracket. So that would be like yeah. somewhere somewhere up here, well above this, calling fight slime and putting its result in a variable. Yeah. So uh, you, you couldn't put it here, but you can imagine saying uh, you, you, you've done let, yes? Yes, we have. Yeah, so let my result equals fight slime. So that would actually call the fight slime function, put what it returns into my result, and then it would put my result in this function here. So yeah. we don't want that. What we're doing is we're not passing we're in our button functions um, array here. We don't want the results, the results of calling the function fight slime. We want the actual fight slime function itself. So this yeah. button functions array is a list of functions, which we can then call later. It's not a list of the results of calling those functions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stuart. Um, yeah. Keep those questions coming, folks. Like some I might skip just to save for the Q&A for later, and we'll go accordingly. So how about we check our code, Stuart? Yep. So there's a button. The button. Yeah. Great. Cool. We've got that green stripe. We've got our congratulations. We pat ourselves on the back, and we keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, submit and go to the next challenge, yes? Correct. So fantastic. So now that we have this cave location object, we're going to uh, change our go cave function. We're going to remove that console log in line 64, and we're going to replace that with calling the update function and passing <laughs> that cave location as a parameter, as an argument. So we're going to call the update function. And the argument we're going to pass in here is going to be that cave object from our locations array. So we need to type in locations. And then we need to get the according, uh, the according um, location mm -hmm. from that array. And that's the third element in our array, which we might think would be the number three. But as we learned yesterday, the locations are, this is called zero index. So the, the, the first one is at position zero. And so once we've yeah. so here we've got in the go town function we're calling it with the first one which is the town in yep. go store we're calling update with the second one in the locations array which is the store yep. and then in go cave we're calling it with the third one which is cave perfect um, so the only thing we're missing there where, where did, um where did we oh, sorry. oh here they are yes yeah. so this is this is this is the one we just defined in the previous step and it's the first Correct. second third exactly so the only thing missing here is our semicolon at the end of our line. Perfect. Like, it didn't complain that we didn't do it, but it's always good to have. So that, uh, that is something. Um, there are differing opinions on this. JavaScript tends yep. to try to be clever about whether yep. it thinks you need a semicolon or not, so you can leave a bunch of them out. Um, I'm like Ramon. I just always put them in, and then I don't have to have any arguments with anybody about it. But exactly. You will not only see some people leave them out, you will see some people advocate for leaving them out. Yeah. And, and so be prepared for that discussion. But it's never a problem to put them in. It's never wrong. Correct. Exactly. And now that we've done it, Stuart, we can actually try it out in our in our game. You can go to the to the RPG on the right and click on go to cave. Go to cave. Yeah. And then we see fight slime, fight flang at beast, go to town square. Yeah. Except um the um so I can go to the town square. I can go to the cave and then I can go back to the town square. I can't actually fight anything yet because I don't think we've hooked that stuff up. Correct. Nice. Yeah. So I've I've folks are leaving questions. I'd love to save this for the QA just so Stuart and I can bop along. So I think we can. Check our code now. Control and enter. No, it didn't work. You've got to be over here, have you? Probably. No, it just doesn't work, so I'll click on the button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't do anything. That's odd. Oh, uh, go to the console for me real quick, please, Stuart. Oh, we've got an error. Line 53. Oh, I think we uh, typed oh, something. Did I, did I? Oh, that's weird. 
Ah, right. Yeah, ah, sorry. That, that was my fault. <laughs> um, so let's try that again. Control enter. Right. Fantastic. So that part, fine. Um, but that was interesting because what you saw there. So what I did was I accidentally removed some text. So this is now not valid JavaScript. Yeah. Um, and when we ran it, you, can, you yeah. get the error in the console. And in this particular thing, it says go town is not defined. But the problem is not that you failed to define this is that this is you look at this and go, but that's completely not valid. What did I do? Right. And the answer is deleted a bunch of text by accident. My fault. Exactly. All um, good. All good. This is great to see. Thank you so much, Stuart. So you uh, uh, essentially did if I hit do. control Z. Yeah. It undoes the previous change and now it should work. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah, Thank you. The there we go. Fantastic. So now we've, we, that our store and cave locations are complete, we can code the actions the player takes at these locations. Ooh. So the first thing we're going to do is set our gold to be equals to gold minus 10. This is interesting. So we're going to take our variable gold, which we defined way in the beginning. So we can send, we can call, we can type in, oh yeah, let's go take a look at the top. So we can see that our goal is 50, and it's a let, which means it's changeable. It's reassignable. Yeah. So we can set our goal to have a new value. So we're going to do that with the uh, assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And now we're going to take that, and if we want to subtract 10 from our goal, we will say, well, we will set goal to be whatever goal is minus 10. So goal minus 10. Nothing happens yet because we haven't ran our, our function. But if we go now to the store in our game. Okay, uh, I, I want to show the console. Yep, perfect. Yep. So if I buy buy health, if I buy 10 health. So we should see what we're expecting to happen here is that the value of gold will go down. Yes? Correct. But it hasn't happened. Now, the reason for that is because back in our HTML, we've set that text to always be 50. This is called hardwiring. Oh, but that's, sorry. oh, if you go to the index.html, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So there you can here, see gold I'll, is 50. So that the, the, the point is that that value there, that just says 50. That's not attempting to reflect the value of our gold variable. We've just Correct. made, so there are two steps here. There's our gold variable in our JavaScript. But we're also going to have to make sure that this bit in the page then gets updated yep. to say the value of that, which I'm assuming is coming in the next step or the step after it or something like that. Correct. In fact, Mehmet's, oops, sorry, Mehmet's already nailed it. Gold text .inner text should be the new gold value. And that's exactly right. We have a variable that references this uh, element where <laughs> the text is held. And some folks are giving us hints as to an easier way to write this. Gold minus equals 10. Lots of folks. Anthony's saying gold minus equals 10. Gold minus equals 10. I bet we're going to get there. So don't be too confused by it yet. We're previewing a future step, I'm sure. But, Stuart, I'd love it if you could please do something for me. Because I don't know if I can trust that this is actually doing it. Could you perhaps please, after line 72, do a console log with that gold as a parameter? An argument, sorry. Thank you. And, and can then, you go to the store again? Let's see. If we go to the store again and then buy 10 health. It yeah, now it's 40. 40. Can you do it again? Um, oh, I can. Yeah. So buy another 10 health. It now says 30. Exactly. So it is indeed going down. 20, 10. Here's a useful trick. Zero minus 10. We now have a negative amount of gold and we can keep buying. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, it's the just other... the computer doesn't care. It's just like, hey, I, you want me to. Oh, I. This is interesting. This is a very handy way of uh, displaying a console log. So what, what Stuart's done here is he's passed two arguments to console log. The first one is a string, and the next one is gold, the value of gold. So let's see what happens now. So if we now say buy 10 health, we now see our current gold value is 40. Um, that's useful because if you just log the number and you've yeah. got um, a few different places in your code where you're logging different numbers. You just see the number 12 and you're not really sure what it is. So it's exactly. quite handy to put a value on it. Correct. Fantastic. 
Yeah, so that looks good. Shall we remove that console log and check our code? Cool. We'll pat pat and we'll keep going. So now we're going to do the same thing, but with health. We're going to set health to be health plus 10. So after line 72, we'll do the same thing. Health equals health plus 10. And I'm feeling pretty confident about this, so I'm not going to console log it or try it out. I would say let's check our code and bop along to the next step. Amazing. Hey, that Thank you, Pat Pat. Now, ah, here we go. We're going to do a compound. This is this shortcut that folks were very accurately mentioning. Gold minus equals 10. Uh, gold minus equals 10. Gold minus equals 10. This is called the compound assignment. So instead of gold equals gold minus 10, we can write gold minus equals 10. And so oh, line 72 and 73 time. are now equivalent. They do the same yeah. thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so we have we don't want to do it twice, obviously, but th those are the same thing. And the reason this exists is because it's a little bit shorter. Um, exactly. And especially if this wasn't called gold, but it was called current value of the gold that you've got, having to type it twice in the same line is quite annoying. So this means you only have to type the name of the variable once. Exactly. It's a it's kind of a shortcut. So could you do please the same for health, but instead of minus, make it with equals. I can. Perfect. And again, we could have a load of spaces in here if we like it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Yep. So we're we're feeling pretty good about this. Let's submit. Pat pat, and we'll keep going. Great. So now we need to display those values, and we previewed that a little bit when. Uh, when Mehmet mentioned it, let me see if I can get that message. So Mehmet said the gold text inner text needs to show the no the new gold value. So how about we do that um, for the gold text and the health text? So could you please give me a new line there? Perfect. So we'll set gold text. That's the variable that contains our element. And we're going to reassign its inner text property to be equals to gold. Now we'll do the same for the health text. To health. Perfect. Now we can try it out. Do you want to go to the store? Great. So we buy 10 health. And now we can see our health has gone up by 10 and our gold has gone down by 10 as well. And if you do it a bunch of times, Stuart, we can still go into that into that negative amount. Perfect. Yeah. And if we wanted to, we could cheat and say, oh, this equals a thousand. <gasps> and then, yeah, now we're gonna win. Be any dragon yeah. like this, check it out. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not what the instructions yeah. say. So we'll do, we'll skip that. But yes. Um but this is the way you can code your games. Sorry. A, cu a couple of additional thoughts about that. The first one is that here, gold is a number, but you're setting oh, the yeah. text of gold text to be a number, and that works fine. Some, if you've done some other programming before in some other languages, they're a lot more picky about the fact that numbers are numbers, mm. strings are strings, and they're not the same. JavaScript is quite tolerant about this sort of thing, so you can assign a number to some text. The other thing is that sometimes you will see this written as text content rather than inner text. Um, they're basically equivalent. Don't worry about it. Text content is slightly more modern, but inner text works fine. That. It was invented first. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Uh, inner text, uh, because people may have seen inner HTML, which assigns the HTML. Oh, we looked at that yesterday. Yeah. 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 Um, in, inner text sets the text. The nice thing about inner text and about text content is that if we assign some HTML to this, uh, actually, no, if I make it italic, let's say. Mm -hmm. That's the I element, is that right? Yeah. Yes, that's the I element, yeah. Um, oh, then, you're, you're we, using a plus there, Stuart. I'm sorry. I so am. Gold and... right. Sorry, yes. Uh, yeah, good oh, good. Um, so if I go to the store and then buy 10 health, you'll see. Oh, uh, yeah. The beauty is that it escapes this HTML. So um, if you set in a text and you've accidentally got HTML in that text, it doesn't become HTML in the page. Now, yeah. this is it's not particularly important now, but 
this is why it's important to, if you want to set the text of something, always set in a text or text content. Don't yep. set in a HTML um, when you don't right. want it to be HTML. That is a very good piece of advice. And we explored a little bit of why yesterday. And this is, of course, to do with whether you're letting folks write a piece of text that should show up. That could be a security problem. Because yeah. in theory, they could write JavaScript into your website. Yeah. Cool. This looks great. Uh, do we want to check our code and move on? Yeah, Amazing. Looks good. That. Love it. So... Ah, now we're going to check what happens in this situation where we don't have enough money to buy health. This is going to be where our code gets a little bit more complicated because now we're going to have different situations, different things happen in different situations. And you might have seen these before, but this is where we're going to introduce the concept of an if statement. So what we can do is with this if keyword, put in a condition. Say like, hey, if in the situation that we don't have enough money, instead of doing, uh, sorry, let me let me rephrase that. If in the situation that we don't have enough money, we're going to do this thing. We're going to write some code that will only run when we don't have enough money. How does that sound? Uh, I think actually what we're going to do is we're going to write code which only runs when we do have enough money. My apologies. But, yes. I kind but, of... but, but, but you, you you could write it either way. Um, and right. if they have to be positive or negative, it could be whatever you want it to be. Exactly. So the code between um, line 72 and 75 is only going to be run. And now we're going to type in if, and then use smooth brackets. And inside these brackets, we're going to run our, we're going to write our condition. And so this condition is something that needs to, pass it needs to be a it needs to be true it needs to be something that that is in fact the truth so here we're going to check that our code our gold is greater than or equals to 10 and what Stuart's done here is he's written gold then use the bigger than sign and then the equal sign if we put in for example just the bigger than sign that means if gold is bigger than 10 we can do this stuff but we're putting Bigger than or equal to. Because we want this to happen. If you've got 10 gold, you should be allowed to spend 10 gold and then you'll have zero. If we didn't have that, it would only let you do it if you had 11 gold. Correct. Or, or, or. So one last thing to do is we need to wrap the code that is going to be run when this condition passes in curly brackets. And just as a reminder, this is not the same curly brackets as an object. This is the curly brackets that are similar to a function. So this is the scope or the inside of this if statement. So Stuart, if you could please uh, move all of that code, you could also just surround, exactly, perfect. Could you do me one more favor uh, and right click? Oh, I was just gonna ask you to do that with, uh, There's a there, if you right click um, in the editor, you get a format document option. Ooh, that's that does that for you. Do that. Nice. Okay. We, it got pointed <laughs> out. It got pointed out to us live. <laughs> I was going to do that by hand by typing in all the spaces. Um, and again, the um, so this format code thing tends to yeah. indent. So, so the bits in between um a curly bracket and a closed curly bracket is called a block. Mm. And this and it tends to indent a block by two spaces. So, uh, this here, the body of this function is a block. Inside it, there's an if statement and then another block. another block. So, so the stuff in between, so you got if gold is 10, then do the stuff in this block. Yeah. And if gold isn't greater than or equal to 10, nothing it's happens. Not gonna, it's not going to run the code that's in that block. We can try it out. Shall we go to the store and try and see if we can get some okay. free health? Let's go to the store. Um, so we can buy health, we can buy health, we can buy health, we can buy health. We've still got, we're still greater than or equal to 10. Yeah. So we can buy some more, but now gold is zero, which is not greater than or equal to 10. So when we press buy 10 health, it should come into buy health. It will say, is gold greater than or equal to 10? No. So we skip over all of this, carry on from here and there's nothing else to do. So we end the function. So if I click this, Correct. nothing should happen. 
And in fact, nothing happens. I promise I am yeah. clicking it. It doesn't show you that, I... but I am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now we now we've built in this this mechanism to check. And this is and, and this is where we've got these these blocks of code as Stuart very well, as very, very well put it. Thank you. Uh, that only run if this condition passes. So shall okay. we check our code and move on? We're good. Fantastic. Pat pat. So now it'll when we try to buy our health, it's it will only work if we have enough money. But if they do not, nothing will happen. So what we can do is have what's called an else statement that is going to be the code that runs, the block of code that runs if the if the condition in the if statement does not pass. So what we're going to do here is type in else. And you see we're doing it after the curly brackets from the if statement. And then we're going to have here a chunk of code that runs only if the if statement condition does not pass. And just for experimentation's sake, shall we put in a console log? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So let's open up our console and let's go to the store. So we'll buy it. We don't see anything. We don't see anything. We're buying. We're buying. We're now out of and gold. Now it, and you do not have enough money. The console logs our thing. Excellent. So the else the else block is going to have a chunk of code that will only run when the if statement condition does not pass. Um, the so other only... thing about this is right here, you can see this block is empty, yeah. and that's fine. You don't have to have any statements in it. Now, there's not a lot of point in doing this because you might as well have just skipped the whole thing and just had the if statement, but it's yeah. perfectly legitimate to have a block of code with no actual code in it. So it will yeah. it will say, if gold is greater than or equal to 10, do this. Otherwise, do everything in this block, which happens to be nothing, but that's okay. Um, so, so in here we could make it so a wizard comes and gives us another 50 gold if we wanted, but we're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and folks are saying, Eric, Eric is saying here, you can use text.inner text to change the message in the game. Absolutely. Tina's saying, love these console log error messages, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's keep going. We're doing great. And I'm so glad we're. Pat, Pat. The location of code passes. And on we go. Fantastic. So. Here, ah, there you go. So we're in our else statement. We're now going to set that text dot inner text to have this this string that uh, very similar to what Eric mentioned just now. You know, you do not have enough gold to buy health. And we can try it out. Of course, after we're putting our semicolon. Okay. And so, oh, we want to show the console. Oh no, sorry, that will change it. Let's change it in the actual game. So, um, text is this area here, right? Correct. Okay, it's and that's a, it's defined, a, that's defined in our index.html um, as uh, so there. line 24. There, there we called it id equals text, and then up at the top here, we actually, yes. So just calling it, um, putting id equals text in the HTML does not in itself make, yeah. make you have a variable in JavaScript called text. You have to explicitly set that up, which we have done, which you've already done yesterday, and everyone has already seen that, but I'm confirming Perfect. it for No, myself. it's good. No, it's good. It's good to keep track of that because, especially if you're doing lots of these steps, you're, I forget sometimes what these are called. So if so we, we go can... into here now and then buy health and buy health and buy health and buy health and buy health, then if we try and buy some more, it changes yep. the value of text or inner text. And again, because this is inner text, um, if this had HTML in it, that HTML would not take effect. So if you put a bold or an italic tag in there. Then right the text bold or italic because we're using inner text, not inner HTML. Right, that would be a good argument for using inner HTML if we wanted to. Yes. Okay. Amazing. So that looks yeah. Let's do it. Looks that good. Looks good. Pat, pat. We'll keep going. So now we're going to create a new variable in our, at the top, and you, you you're seeing this this pattern of like we're defining a lot of variables at the top of our scripts of our JavaScript file, and then later on we're defining functions. And this tends to be just sort of a way of organizing the way you can be like, cool, I need to work with my variables. They're probably going to be near the top of a block of code because the block of code here, our entire file is one block of code as well. Is that right, Stuart? Yep. Yep. 
Fantastic. So we'll create a new variable here called weapons, and it will be an empty array. Eric, I love your question. Is it better not to use inner HTML at all? I would say no, as Stuart said earlier, like it's it's best to use it when you need it. But if you're just going to be assigning text, then it's best to stick with inner text or text content. Yeah. Um I am wary of using inner HTML. So Eric, you're yeah. um when you say is it better not to use it at all? Every time I find myself using inner HTML, I think, eh, did I really want to do that? I'm not sure about that. So um in a way, using inner HTML tends to trigger a thing in my head which says, "Are you sure you want to be doing it this way?" Because there is that danger to it. So that makes a lot I, of sense. Thank you. I don't use it very much for exactly that reason. There's a lot of ways it can trip you up, and if you just don't use it, you'll be fine. But there are times when it's appropriate. I wouldn't swear off inner HTML entirely, but in general, mm. if you can avoid using it, you should avoid using it because. It, as Ramon says, it closes down one potential avenue for security issues. If you just never put HTML in the page directly, you only put text in, then you're good. Exactly. Thank you so much. And, oh, Tina also said this. Um, by putting them out, uh, at the top, that also means those variables have global scope. And what that means is that we can access these variables from inside functions that are inside this file. Yeah. So... Um, in here, for example, in GoTown, we're using the locations value, and yep. locations is defined outside of any function, which means it's available in all functions. Very well put. Yeah. So we haven't done anything new with weapons yet, so we can check our code and move on to the next step. Thank you. Pat, pat. Cool. So our weapons array <laughs> is going to add, is going to hold objects just like the locations one does. And so we're going to be adding four objects to our weapons array, each of which will have two properties, one with the key of name and the other one with the key of power. So the first would have the name set to stick and the power set to five. Perfect. Okay. And then the, so we've there with our curly brackets made a new object. And to separate each of those objects, well, ex oh, absolutely. Let's copy and paste that. The second one will be called dagger and the power will be 30. Okay, so if we do, I'll, I'll put them all in place and then change them afterwards because it's quicker. Perfect. Dagger is dagger and 30. 30. And then the third will be claw hammer and set to 50. Claw hammer is a 50. And then sword hey, Tower is No need to wrong. apologize for being late. Sorry, I, I spoke over you, Stuart. No, no, that's cool. Um, I'll just type in the thing. And this is an example of where the um, the ability to use as much space as you want could be useful because some people would look at that and say, that's a bit untidy. Why don't we tidy it up? So Ooh. it looks like that. And that yeah. can be quite useful because now you can look down and see all the powers lined up. You can see all the names lined up. Some people think this is um, a violation of everything that's sacred about coding and they hate it when you do this. But yeah, um, this this is a personal preference thing. The whole point of the way JavaScript sets these things up is you can do either, and it does not matter. That's great to know. I I forget that that's an option I can have. <laughs> so it's that's nice. great to know. Thank you. Sometimes, especially if you're scanning down a big file, it can yeah. be quite convenient. So, for example, here with these um this weapon uh, object that hmm. I've defined, I put them both on the same line. I could have done uh, that. And right. We, and in fact, we could have done this and then done the same for all of them. But that would mean our weapons list would take up half of the screen. Whereas right. this way, because they're quite short, the definitions for each of these things is quite short. So they fit on one line. I think it looks yeah. tidier to just define them all on one line because then our list of weapons only takes up four lines rather than 16 lines. Um, yeah. But again, that's a personal preference thing. Um, it also depends on how much stuff you're defining in your objects and so on. And as I mentioned earlier, the, um, the automatic format in your editor quite often has opinions about this kind of thing and sticking with it is useful. So interestingly, if we now say format document, ha, so it formats it like that. <laughs> okay. 
So, so this, so free code cam here has its own built-in preference, so to speak. Yes. And Perfect. you saw there, I tend to do this. Um, I ha I do um, hugging braces, they're called, as opposed to mm. white braces. But that is pure personal preference. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Um, and you can choose either wh whatever you think um, looks tidiest and will make it easier for you to read the code in the future. Um, a lot of people talk about how you're writing code so people can read it, and that is true. But the person who is most likely to be reading this code and trying to understand it is you two months from now. So oh, yeah. writing something which will make it understandable to you is really useful, right? And you owe yourself a bit of help. So if you can help yourself out later on, do it. I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you. <laughs> So this looks great. It's not going to change the function um, functionality of our of our um, of our game because we've just defined this var these this variable of weapons. It's not going to change any of the behavior. Let's put it that way. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. We've yeah. defined a weapons variable. We haven't done anything with it, so it's just Until there, but nothing's using it yet. Okay. And that passed. So cool. And uh, we've just seen this pop up come up. Our this this just to remind you all: this boot camp is free. This uh, free code camp is free. They depend on donations from folks. Um, so only if you can, feel free to send them some money. But if you can't, please don't feel pressured. You can come back at a later time. We're going to click on Ask Me Later here. Okay. So in our buy weapon function, oh, we're going to make an if statement. We're already a little bit familiar with this. So we're going to check if our gold is greater or equals to 30. Gold is greater than or equal to 30. Um, a thing to bear in mind. Greater, rather, greater than or equals has to be that way around. It can't be equals or greater than. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, it has to be greater than or equals. And less than or equals is the same. Um, it has to be less than or greater than first, and then the equal sign afterwards. You've got to do them That's that a very good point. So we had to define an if statement to check, but it didn't tell us what to do with that if statement, so that's presumably correct. We have an if it statement with a block that contains no code. So what happens if we hit buy weapon now is it'll check whether you've got more than 30 gold and then not do anything. And if you haven't got more than 30 gold, it also won't do it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So if we check our code, it looks good. Looks good. It's not going to do anything when we press a button, but I bet here we go. So we're going to subtract 30 from our gold if it's bigger than or equals to 30. So we're going to set gold. Ooh, let's try that new compound thing. So we're going to do gold and then minus equals 30, which remember is the equivalent to gold equals gold minus 30. But this is the compound way and it's a little bit shorter. Okay. We can actually try it now, can't we? Let's, let's give it a try. Go to store. We'd like to buy a weapon for 30 gold. Did you press it? I did. But now hang on. Remember, it, um, we're not updating the text in the page. Ah. And this is an important point. In the previous function, when we did this, our right. buy health function updates the value of um, gold and health in the page. This buy weapon function doesn't. So it, it will have subtracted 30 from our gold, but it hasn't changed anything to tell us that. Mm. And that's useful to know, because not only are we not updating this, this check we do, um, where we display this kind of thing, that was done in a different function, not in this one. So we're having to repeat that code in both of these functions. Right. Um, Thank you. Can, that makes a lot of we, sense. We can check here, if you remember. So. Oh, yeah. Great idea. Uh, and we'll use a comment so that we can have both a string and that value as yeah. arguments. Okay, and then if I bring up the console, um, you'll see we put this console log outside the if statement. So every time we go into, every time we call by weapon, we will print this. So either if we may have subtracted some gold or we may not have done, but we'll always print it. So if I go to the store and buy a weapon, it says we have this much gold, 20, and then I press the button again, it says the same thing. Uh -huh. It goes in here, do we have more uh, more than 30 gold? Uh, we do not. We do not. So we don't run this, but we still do run this because it's yeah. inside the function, but it's not inside the if statement. So if I keep clicking that, it will still say 20. 
Perfect. Okay. Happy to move Thank on? You. Let's let's do it. Okay, looks good. Fantastic. Well, pat, pat. So now the value of our current weapon corresponds to an index in the weapon's array. So the this player starts with a stick since current weapon starts at zero and weapon zero is the stick weapon. So in the buy so, weapon so, function... So, 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 oh, sorry. Um, so current weapon is defined up the top as zero, which we did a uh, long time ago and haven't thought about since. So the yeah. point is that... Um, that's because we explicitly created a current weapon variable and we explicitly made it zero. It doesn't start off as zero. If you just use a variable that you haven't declared, it doesn't necessarily automatically become zero. So that's make good sure to know. You always declare um, variables you're going to use and give them a value that they have. You don't have to do it right away. So here we've declared fighting, but we haven't given it any value. But make sure you Correct. give it a value before you try and do anything with it. That's good to know. Thank oh, you, Stuart. Sorry, do carry on. No, 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 you're great. So that, and I, I, I honestly forgot. So this current weapon shows the index in that weapons array. So because it's zero, it means that we have as our current weapon, a stick because it's the first member of that array. That's the, that's the um, array we just defined at the top here. So here's our yeah. list of weapons. The first item in the array is index zero. So yep. because our current weapon we, we are using current weapon to mean the index into this array. So because we've decided the current weapon starts off as zero, that means the one we in uh, we intend it to mean is the first item in the array, which is the stick. Correct. Okay. Perfect. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using <laughs> compound assignment to add one to the current weapon. So we'll do that with current weapon plus equals one. Well, Perfect. So I seem for tidying it, but I didn't have to. This could also right. be like this if you um, wanted it to be, um, but that looks untidy and confusing. So most people do that. You don't have to. Perfect. Yeah, that's really good to know. Thank you. Yeah. So um, that should be everything we need to do. We okay. can actually... Uh, we don't need... We could console log to see if it works, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, let's let's give it a console log and see how it how it looks. Can't type today. All good. Oh, um, I'm gonna I've got a question from somebody that I'd love to to answer after this. So weapon. So, so what's a weapon uh, index? So if we um go to the go store. To store and then Buy a weapon. Yeah. Our weapon index has gone up to one because we bought a weapon. If I then try and buy a weapon again, I can't yeah. afford a weapon, so it stays at one. Yeah. So we got a question from Random here saying, could you please explain how exactly current weapon is linked to the weapons array? I don't get it. So right. we have... Oh, go ahead, Stuart, please. No, all I was going to say was um, it isn't, and this can be confusing. We... We have decided in ourselves that we have an array called weapons, which has got four items in it, and we've got a variable called current weapon, and we're using current weapon as the index, but they're not tied together. Um, uh -huh. By convention, almost, we have decided we are always going to use the value that's in current weapon to be the index into this array, but they're not actually unified. It's not like it's a property of... The weapons array or anything they're two completely independent variables that we've decided to use together exactly so we've got of those four weapons we are using this current weapon index to point to one of those weapons yeah so and that's and and uh and tina says it really well here a lot of this is prep stuff good practice for pre planning our code out yeah it is so yeah, we we have decided, and later on in the code, we will actually use the value of current weapon to, and do something with it. There'll be something which says um, attack the dragon or whatever with our current weapon, and at that point, we'll mm. use the value of current weapon to look up in the weapons array what our current mm -hmm. weapon is. So if it was me, I'd have probably called this current weapon index. That actually makes more sense. But um, I tend to. If um, if I'm using a variable as an index, I call it something index 
because then you can tell the difference between something which is an index into an array somewhere else and something which is just the we a weapon itself. I would expect a a verbal called current weapon, it, I would expect its value to be a weapon, not yeah. to be an index into a list of weapons. But that's the way they've named this, so we got to stick with it. But you might want to think about calling that current weapon index. Yeah, Mitch says that's good advice, Stuart. Index means it's going to be a number. Yeah. Perfect. Let's right. submit. It looks good. Right. We can move on. Let's do one or two more before going into <laughs> Q&A time. Okay. So, uh, ah. So we're going to use an, another way of inc of changing the value of a number in JavaScript, and this is called incrementing. So this is a special way of writing this code in Java. There is a special way, which is instead of saying current weapon e plus equals one or current weapon equals current weapon plus one, we could just write current weapon plus plus. So this is going to increase when we run this line of code when when javascript run this line 91 it's going to set current weapon to be whatever number it is plus one yeah so that is exactly equivalent to that mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i will tell you a secret as a professional javascript developer people listening to this right um yeah i never ever ever do this apart from in for loops i never use plus plus it's good to know that it exists and at know. some point in the future, you'll you'll learn about for loops and it does get used there. But otherwise, I never do this because it looks confusing. I always do that. Good to know. But so, so that, and, and but, I, but it, again, this is personal preference to some extent. Um, but just as a tip, and the important point about this is when you learn these different ways of doing things, yeah, you can use whichever one you're most happy with. If if, if you want to, every time you do this while, while you're learning or working on things. If you want to write that all the time because it's clearer to you, that's fine. It still works just as well. It's a, it's maybe a bit longer on the screen, but yeah, it can be really helpful to you. If if you find there's one way of doing something that you understand and there's a couple of other ways that you don't quite get, don't feel you have to use the shortest way you've seen or the most recent way you've seen to do something. This code works fine. If we submit it, it will say no because it's trying to teach us things. But the actual yeah. game, I mean, we can we can test it in the game if we want to, but um, that will work fine. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Check, check that. And that's really good advice about like you know this personal personal preference because I also find this plus plus sometimes a little disorienting if you don't see it that much. Yeah. So good. That passes. We'll pat pat. But we'll do one more exercise here. We're going to ah. Take our gold text variable. Could you scroll up to where that was, please? Right. Okay. So gold text is defined up here as the result of query selector hash gold text. So that's looking for a an element in the HTML with an ID of gold text, and that is there. So that is. Uh, this is just like when we did it when we were buying health. Yes, that is that spam. Perfect. So we need to go back to here. No, I need to turn them off. Give me the script back. There we go. So we need to update gold text to display the new value of gold. So gold text. And remember, we want to set in a text again or text mm -hmm. content um, equals gold. So because we've reduced the value of gold, so we're just going to set the inner uh, the inner text of this <coughs> to be the new value of gold that we've got. And then we do text dot in a text equals <laughs> love it. I don't think it's gonna so let us do that. Uh, if we, if we buy it, yay! <laughs> there we go. But no, I love the excitement. We have to pass the test, but bosh, there we go. Oh, and semicolon on the end. You know, it's by the way, there I didn't put the semicolon in, worked fine, but again. I find it tidier to always put them in, and it's never wrong to always put them in. Correct. So I always do. And if we test that now, so uh, we'll, we will go to the store. store, we will buy a weapon, and it says you yeah. now have a new weapon. And then Fantastic. if I click it again, um, the, amount of, the amount of gold doesn't change because we need 30 gold and we've only got 20, and our if statement only runs this stuff if we've got 30 gold or more. Perfect. Okay. I think we can check our code again. Okay. 
we'll submit and go to the next challenge. And then we will stop here for today. And this is where it gets a little bit mean for me. I'm going to sign us some homework. So Stuart, could I ask you a favor, please? Could you go yep. um, towards the top of the, of the, of the website there uh, on the right hand side, there's learn. Yeah, exactly where your mouse is. So we're going to see, scroll down to where we're at and see where we're going to start tomorrow. So homework for today is of course, uh, sorry, the, the homework for today is going to be the do the remaining lessons up until 90. So tomorrow, I sadly won't be able to make it, but Jess and Stewart will be back tomorrow to do moving from 90 onwards. So thank you so much, Stewart, for you know bearing with me through today and through tomorrow with us again. This is just very, very kind of you. Yeah, no, that's all good. Um, So yes, uh, everyone do up to number 90. I will because I'm picking up from here tomorrow, I also need to do the homework. So I'm caught up. So <laughs> I'll do that in between now and tomorrow. And that'll bring Perfect. us up to and that'll bring us up to number 90. Oh, Mehmet said, Can teacher Stewart come to class every day? That is oh, so sweet. Um, you don't you clearly don't want me as a teacher because I'm sure we did number 72 and it hasn't counted it. What's wrong with that? Oh, that is odd. Um, go, um, do you have time I'm for to do it again? So did that work? Right, it's done it now. Good. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, folks, we do still have a couple minutes. Stu uh, Stuart, you okay with doing a couple questions? Sure. If people have got questions, go for it. Yeah. Um, Monica asked here, why are button text and button functions in quotes? In the um, If you remember when we were declaring our locations, some of those properties, keys, had quote marks in them instead of just name. For example, on line 27, we have name. And then below that, we have button text and quote marks. I don't know if you wanted to uh, give that a oh, try. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so the reason for that is that there's a space in it. Yeah. Um, they can all be in quotes. So um, when you're defining an object, which is what we're doing here, um, yeah. you have um, uh, this is a property. Um, that's yep. key. That's the value. And the key name can be in quotes. Um, and yep. it's it's not wrong to put it in quotes. Just a lot of people, me included, thinks it looks tidier if you don't. But you can't do that with button text here because there's a space in it, um, which means Perfect. that it thinks this is the name of um, the property key. And this word button here doesn't belong here at all. Why is there an extra word? And you can see here that it's highlighted this. So um, right. got the little um, red wavy underline here complaining about the formatting here. And if we bring up the console... It says unexpected token, expected comma. And the reason for that is because it's expecting you to do a property and then a comma and then another property and then a comma and so on. And so what happens here is it reads this property and the comma yep. and then it reads button and then there's a space and then it thinks, OK, that must be another property then. So, they, so you should have a comma there. Um, but you didn't have. You then go on to the word text and then it gets confused. So what you do is you put them in quotes, and then it's there, and then it's fine. As I say, it's not a problem to do that if you want to, to, yeah. to put them all in quotes. And you can see here, for example, text here is in quotes, and that's fine. Yeah. But, yes, it's tidier not to. And honestly, doing this is relatively rare because people tend not to create uh, object keys which have spaces in them. For exactly right. that reason, that then you have to put them in quotes. What people would normally do in this situation in the real world is put something like an underscore. Or Perfect. they might do this instead. So Yeah, oh, um, I, and I think keys, you just answered, uh, sorry. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say object keys tend to be one single word, exactly so you don't have to quote them. But in this example they've elected to make this object key have a space in it, probably so we get the chance to explain this to you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Thank you. So, uh, no. Monica, does that answer your question? Hopefully, yes. I think so because I, I think so because uh, they, they just wrote, uh, thanks, would you ever do underscore or camel case for objects instead, which you've just demonstrated uh, can be done with uh, camel case. Yep. Uh, again, no problem. Again, um, you can do it snake case like that. You can do it camel case with a capital T. Um, um, some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. Um, every now and again, I find myself using the same, I, I find myself using both of them sometimes in the same file. And then I think, oh, that's really annoying. I have to go back and change them all. But it really <laughs> doesn't matter. It's whatever's most convenient for you. Fantastic. Thank you. You got time for a couple more? 
We got sure, a couple okay. questions coming in. Thank you so yeah. much. We've got questions. Um, um, happy to help. Amazing. So I think we've got a semi-related question from two folks. So I'm going to merge them both into one. Uh, Random is saying, is there a way to call the key here if, uh, of the location name instead of using an index to access locations? And Stephen B is asking, it seems like there should be a better way to identify each location instead of bracket notation with its index position. Like, is there a way to assign each location to a variable? And the answer to that question is yes. And I probably wouldn't have written the code like this if I was doing it, but yeah. uh, the reason we're doing it this way is because it gradually introduces the concepts one at a time. In practice, exactly. this part of the reason that um, I'm terribly sorry, I've forgotten who asked the question about what current oh, weapons, uh, and weapons have to oh. do with one another. Oh, I, I think <laughs> it was random. Let me double check. Uh, yes, yes, it was random. Right. Okay. Um, yes, there it is. So. Part of the reason that, that's con that that can come across as a bit confusing is that the link between current weapon and weapons is kind of arbitrary. And the reason for that is because in general, people don't do this. What you'd probably do instead here is have each the key. So instead of this location being an array, you'd have it be an object with keys and values. And the value is another object. So, right. Um, so this Could would you give look us an like, yeah. Yeah, uh, so to to go with Monica's idea, um, we'd have locations being an object rather than an array, and then the values in that object. So here, town square is a key, and the value is this whole entire object. Right. And then instead of referring to location zero, you can refer to locations dot town square, and it looks more convenient. Or better like still, um, instead of um. Pass, oh, so I need to put it back to where we were so it's still legitimate. There we go. Um, or better still, in here, go town. You'd probably have it, um, you, you could have it called update locations.town, or you could have something which passes in the word town and then look it up. But that's kind of a more advanced use of these things. And the idea of you have an array, there's four mm. things in it, and this function does the first one, this function does the second, this function does the third. Some people to understand. You did yourself. I probably wouldn't have done it that way. You're probably correct, but you're like eight steps ahead of the course. So <laughs> when we, when we catch up, it'll all be good. Thank you so much. That's really well put. Uh, Ramon, you are muted. Uh, I think I heard some static. You still can't hear me. Okay. Uh, you, maybe you're not muted. You're just silent. Or no, I'm or possibly my. Have I stopped working? Is it working for everybody else and not me? I hear I hear Stuart great. I'm going to refresh real quick. Um, Two seconds. Uh, 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 bear with me. Let me just see if I can hear any other sounds. Maybe it's just me. Goodness, I'm terribly sorry, people. Oh, uh, so folks can hear us. I'll, I'll refresh real quick. Oh, yeah, it's me. Ha, right. Sorry. Can you, you hear me? me so, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're obviously good. I just can't hear anything now. I don't know why. So, yes, oh. everyone's feeling really insane. We can hear you both. So this has just turned my speakers off for no reason. Why has it done that? Oh, there was a bit of a buzz it's earlier. and I... now. It's fixed now. I'm really sorry. <laughs> You're totally fine. Thank you so much, Stuart. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer. We do have just one or two more questions that I want to uh, round th uh, run through. Um, uh, I'd love to hear, because uh, Eric's wondering this too, when is leaving the semicolon out a problem, actually? So imagine if um, we left out that, well, so here, for example, if we left out that semicolon, it would probably be fine. Yeah. But part of the reason that semicolons are useful is you can put more than one statement on a line. I'll tell you what, let's pick a shorter one. Um, so here, we could put those two statements on one line because they're divided by the semicolon, which means JavaScript knows this is a statement, the semicolon finishes it, go on to the next one. Um, but if we left that semicolon out now, suddenly it's not valid anymore. Right. So you don't need it if you do this, because JavaScript is clever enough to go, okay, you put a new line in here, this looks like a new statement, it probably is. So it does what it calls semicolon insertion, where it pretends you wrote a semicolon, and then it's all okay. But... The reason it's useful to always have them in is if you don't have that one in and then you do that, suddenly your code's not valid. 
But if you do have your semicolons in and then you delete that line, it's all still fine. Thank you so much. Uh, we got a couple more questions that I want to take us through, and then I'm going to let us. Uh, then I'm going to let us go get some rest because it's been a lot. Um, quick question from Lisa: Are enums a thing in JavaScript? I think they're not. But in short, enumerable uh, enums is short for enumerables, <laughs> which is a special type of value that lets you pair uh, keywords and values. Is that correct? Yep. Um, so in some other languages, you can define something like that. But in practice, you can do something which looks quite like an enum in JavaScript and get away with it by just using an object or an array. Um, right. The reason enums are often useful in other languages is that when you when you define an enum with certain values and you try and use a value that isn't there, it will explode and give you an error rather than just JavaScript will just quietly say, oh, you didn't define that? I guess I'll assume it's undefined then and then carry on. Yeah. So the actual enum construct doesn't exist in JavaScript, but in practice, you can do something quite like it. Perfect. Thank you. Got two more and then I'm going to cut okay. us off there. Uh, thank you so much, Stuart. So the next question is from Mitch, who's asking, who's saying, and you mentioned in order to bring an HTML element into the JavaScript file, it has to be linked to a variable that we can then manipulate. Do you always have to use a function like query selector to do this? And I would say that the short answer is yes. So we need to assign to this variable the value that refers to, that is a reference to, that HTML element in our DOM which is query selector. There are other ways to do this. Like I remember when, when I started, uh, there was something called, uh, there is something called document get element by ID. Yep. And then you put in the name. Notice there's no hashtag. That's because we are referring only to a, an ID. And I believe there's the same for class. Is that right? So sort of. I could be wrong. Um, so you, so we could have done that instead. So get element by ID fetches elements by ID. Um, there's also um, get elements by uh -huh. class name, and that returns an array of mm. things with a particular class. So here, for example, we've got span class equals stat. Yeah, we've and got a couple of and, there, and there's actually uh, two of those. There's one for health, and there's one. Oh, there's three, actually. There's one for XP. There's one for health, and there's one for gold. So we could up here at the top. Um, this could be um, get elements by class name stat. Mm. Actually, actually, we don't want to do this here. Bear with me. Sorry. If I undo all that, so it, I want to undo any further. Okay, never mind. Whatever. Don't, don't matter. Um, so here, um, I was going to use gold text, isn't it? Yes. So there we could do get elements by class name stat, and then that will return an array with this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one. Right. And so because this is the third one, we this is obviously digit two because it's oh. zero, one, and two. So we could have done that, I think. Um, yeah. We just check. Oh, no, we couldn't, actually, because that class equals stat is the whole span. So that's all of this. It's not. Oh. So we wouldn't want to do that, in fact. Um, Okay, but, but, but yeah, the, 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 the principle is sound. I'm just going to hit refresh so it throws away my <laughs> changes. <laughs> but yeah, so there's get elements by class name. Um, the, the reason you might think, why do all these ones exist? Get elements by ID, get elements by name, get elements by class name, when we could just use query selector for everything. And the answer is they all existed first. Query yeah. selector got created afterwards. And now... People often use either query selector to get the element which matches this or query selector all to get all the elements. that. Oh, now good. In, right. And that, sorry. In this particular example, query selector and query selector all, you wouldn't use query selector all to get something with an ID because there's only ever right. one thing with a given ID in a page. But if we were fetching elements by class name or by the name of the element itself, like button yeah. or span, then query selector all will return an array of all the matches. Query selector returns one single element, which is the first one in that array. So even if there are more than one, you only get one, and it's the first one. Query selector is better. As Mitch says, query selector yeah. and query selector all are basically 
improvements which got invented afterwards. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to ask one more question from Diogo, which I think is a good one. General question. Any tips on how we can retain what we've learned in class? Sometimes it feels like there's too much co content to <laughs> absorb. And that's a really that's a really good question. And I, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Stuart, if you have any. Ooh, um, there is a lot of content to absorb. Um, going through the uh, the free code camp stuff by yourself is often useful. But how you best learn is something that in itself you need to learn about yourself. And it's difficult yeah. to give advice about this kind of thing because a lot of people learn differently. So I... Yeah. I went through this whole free CodeCam course um, to give me a sense of what it was going to do and how it was going to work and so on. And I found that really useful because I quite often learn by doing things, but yeah. some other people learn best by reading um, or mm -hmm. by watching videos or by yeah. um, whatever. So learning how you yourself learn is a really useful skill. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you'd be able to say to yourself, okay, how can I retain what I've learned in class? The way I do that best is by um, taking these videos and listening to them on my earphones while I'm on the bus to work. Or um, the way I best learn about these things is by reading the transcripts, or the way I best learn is by doing the um, the JavaScript stuff myself, which you should be doing because you've got homework. Um, but yes, it's a difficult question to ask Sorry, it's a difficult question to answer. It's a very easy question to ask. It's a difficult question to answer on behalf of other people. So, yeah. but Ramon, um, you, I, I, I want to hear your suggestions for. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm the same as you, Stuart. So I, I, what I what I would love to add to that, if I may, is that it can often seem very daunting to have all of this stuff thrown at you. And maybe it clicks for a minute, maybe it doesn't. And you're like, no, I need to understand this fully. And, and I'm very sorry to say that it's going to take a little bit of like, like Jess always says, like, go ask someone, uh, go experiment, get, get weird to truly understand it and maybe even then you're not going to truly understand it and it's going to take take you teaching a boot camp on javascript free online for something to finally click in your head and for example you all saw me make a mistake a couple days ago where i i confidently was wrong uh that an array uh, that a string is an object right and, a, and i believe a string is a primitive there is a string object as well but the point is oh sorry yeah, no, I'm I'm just nodding, but honestly, <laughs> that sounds like the sort of mistake I'd make. Uh, if, if if you asked me that question and yep. made me put money on the answer, I'd have, I'd have probably said a string was a primitive and string objects are different. But like, unless you're being tested by someone, you never need to know this. You just go and look it up on the Mozilla Developer Network. <laughs> exactly. Like and, and my brain isn't going to hold everything. And like I know I sometimes jokingly say this, but this is kind of the impetus of having something like documentation because we need to look stuff up. And people are going to be as asking these questions as well. I want to highlight what Random said here. I really love it. For me, the best ways to use New Lodge is often as possible to just build stuff with it. Yeah, play around. Like I love you know messing around with the games here, for example. Okay, I've taken us 50, 15 <coughs> minutes over time. I just want to say thank you so much, Stuart. Um, uh, no, friends, no we'll problem. Be... There was one other question that someone asked, which I feel I ought to answer just because um, I, oh, can't sorry. Let, I, I, I can't let things go out into the world. Someone um, someone asked what my background is. Uh, and then oh. someone else said they thought it was the new TARDIS. And sadly, it is not the new TARDIS. It is Colin Baker's TARDIS from 1983. So... <laughs> It is the TARDIS, well spotted. Everyone who's like, I think it's the TARDIS. It's the TARDIS, isn't it? But it's not the new one. It's the ancient one. So... <laughs> That's from Doctor Who, right? It is, yes. This is um, this is the um, Colin Baker, the sixth Doctor's TARDIS mm. from Doctor Who, I think. Love I, um, The BBC have a, um, a website where you can download lots of pictures of sets to use as desktop backgrounds. And there's like 12 different TARDIS ones. So, so I got one of those. That's lovely. I love it. I, I, I did like when we were earlier, I was like, that's a TARDIS, isn't it? It is. It <laughs> totally is a TARDIS. All the roundels on the wall are the clip. <laughs> lovely. Okay. I've kept you for long enough. Thank you so much, Stuart. Um,
It was absolutely lovely. Thank you all so much for joining in. Remember, there is um, a lot to do. Don't overdo it for yourselves. If something's got you stuck, please ask questions um, and never hesitate to come back to things that you had before and uh, get lots of rest as well. We'll be back with step 90 tomorrow with Stuart and Jess. So thanks again, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Bye for now. Bye.